Tonight on The Henry Rollins Show, Penelope Spheris, the groundbreaking director of The Decline of Western Civilization, is here to share tales from the early days of punk and her upcoming Janis Joplin project. And John Doe from the legendary band X joins Heidi May for an exclusive musical performance. Folks, it's going to be a great show. Don't move. For some American companies, the fact that China is open for business is a Wall Street wet dream. China. They shoot students, don't they? We just leave ours behind. Companies such as Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, The Rolling Stones, and For Him magazine have happily caved into the demands of the Communist Party, which would make them sympathetic to the cause, which would make them communist sympathizers, right? Hell no, it's just business. Microsoft agreed to block the words democracy and freedom through its Chinese portal. Google agreed to deny access to sites the Chinese government considers illegal, like the ones for human rights groups. By being in the Chinese marketplace, Google whips ass on the Beijing-based Baidu.com, who is taking market share away from Google. You can't fight City Hall, and you can't tell those commie bastards how to run their country. And it seems some American companies wouldn't dare as long as the check's clear. I used Google to get information on how the Communist Party of China arrests practitioners of Falun Gong and how fucking lame Google is for censoring itself for China. When you look up Falun Gong on Google.cn in China, all you get is access to a string of articles that condemn the movement. That is pretty fucking weak. Google reps say that some information is better than none. Won't the restrictions that limit internet users in China only make them see just how much they're being oppressed? I sure would hate to see, with a high-resolution screen and a high-speed connection, exactly what I was missing. I think I would give that the high-speed finger. Yahoo aided in the arrest of Chinese journalist Shi Tao, who the Chinese government accuses of leaking state secrets. Apparently, the big secret had to do with dissidents returning to mark the fact that it's been 15 years since Chinese soldiers shot unarmed students in Tiananmen Square. This event is known all over the world as the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Shi Tao admits to forwarding the letter sent into his newspaper to other people, but contends that it was not a secret of any kind. Good thing Yahoo was there to help the Chinese investigators track down Shi Tao's IP address so we could hurry up and get started with his 10-year prison sentence. Thanks, Yahoo! Who does anything for money? Crackheads and huge American companies. What do you want to be when you grow up? Joining me now is renowned director Penelope Spheris, whose work over the last three decades includes The Decline of Western Civilization 1, 2, and 3, Wayne's World, and her latest The Kid and I. Penelope is taking time out from writing her upcoming Janis Joplin feature film to talk with us today. Penelope, it's good to see you. Thanks for being on our show. Thank you. Uh, you might not remember this, but the last time I think we saw each other, I was walking west up Sunset Boulevard and you were in the right lane heading west, and you stopped and I went, did. Henry! I know. Penelope! I know. Traffic. Beep, beep. You're like, whatever. How are you doing? What are you up to? I'm like, oh, you know. And like, there's like half of LA is waiting to go back home or something. Yeah. And uh, finally, I went, well, okay, see you. Yeah. So here you are again. Well, I think about the time that I very first met you, which was back in 19, oh, early 80s yeah, or something. 80, 80, you had just come here from yeah, yeah. Washington, yeah. D.C., yes, and you were just, you know, hot shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 the, in the scene around here. Everybody was like, do you know this guy, Henry Rollins, just came to town? Oh, my God, you got to meet him, you got to meet him. And I thought, well, 
I think what I need to do is to put him uh, as the lead in Suburbia. Yeah. So remember, I, I called you, asked you to come up to my office, you know? <laughs> At Santa Monica and, and Fairfax. Right, yeah. and and you came in, and I, I kind of remember, like, almost being down on my knees begging you, please play the role of Jack in the decline. Yeah, and, you know? and I wanted to, yeah. and... With the way Black Flag, the band I was in, the way that band was at that time, there is no way they were going to let me out oh. of the hold uh -huh. to go do anything that wasn't Black Flag. It just yeah. was not going to happen. Possessive. It, it, it would have just been either you do the movie and we'll never talk to you again. Oh, yeah. But just FYI, it's not, I was, it was never a, I don't want to be in I'm your film. I'm too cool to be yeah, in No, your no, movie. I'm not too cool for anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm desperate for attention and employment. <laughs> but um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, when are the Decline films hitting DVD? Because I have looked for them. I know. And we've contacted you before going, hey, Penelope, what's up with that? And so... <laughs> So what is up with that? Well, uh, you know, a few years ago when I decided, okay, it's finally time to put these out on DVD, I went to my vault and I started digging out old cans of film, and I actually had more old stuff than I thought I had. Mm. So I sat down, and I swear I was like a year and a half putting little pieces of 16 millimeter film in the, in the guillotine splicer and putting them together. <laughs> it was like such a hard job. But then once I got them organized, then we started putting them into a digital form, and we're still working on it, you know? Um, and I really want to have the declines come out um, soon, but uh, I want it to be right. For me, it's like, I don't really care about making money on it, because I made my money other ways. Right. For me, it's about doing it right, because when I'm dead and gone, no one's gonna go, oh, that's a chick that did Wayne's World. They're gonna go, that's a chick that did the decline in Western civilization, so it's gotta be right. Well, you know, I've, I know a bit about those days and the level of insanity at, at those gigs, you know, where you could go and lose an eye. You could yeah, go you to could. a show yeah. and go to the hospital afterwards. There would be something in the parking lot, uh, something, some kind of clash in the parking lot mm -hmm. where the cops would come, the choppers are overhead, mm -hmm. the tear gas. I mean, it was really something else. I was sitting there talking to Greg Ginn when I tried to convince him from Black Flag to be in the movie. All of a sudden, this person comes up from behind me, grabs me by the neck, pulls me off of the chair. I'm like, what's going on here? And it was his girlfriend who thought I was trying to pick him up. Oh. Right? And then he went and punched her, and her tooth fell out on the ground. I mean, that's the way it was back then, and the chicks walk trying to find her tooth on the ground. And I'm like, what the hell am I getting I, I know, into I, here? Rem <laughs> I, I remember her. You remember her? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I have some stories. <laughs> uh, there's so much vitality in that film. These young people, you know, living this yeah. amazing lifestyle, really heroic, charismatic people. I mean, they're just amazing. They really are. In decline one. Yeah. yeah. They're just, they're so different than, yeah. they're, they're, easily different than their parents. Right. You know, they, they came from other places, they ran away, they yeah. found themselves. Did you find yourself, be, you know, and, and you're a little older than they are, so you're looking at them as kind of an, an older person. Did you find yourself being inspired by them? Um, I, I was inspired, once I got to understand really what the punk rock philosophy was all about, uh, I've embraced it over the years and still live by what I believe those rules to be. Mm. And um, just the other night had this great dinner with these 10 people from Decline 3. And you know what? I just love those people. They're just, th that's who I relate to on, mm. a, on, a, on a philosophical level. They're just good, fine people, you know? Um, if, if it's, I mean, I'm not talking about the poser punks. I'm not talking about the guy that goes out and gets a purple mohawk for the weekend or something. You know, I'm talking about the people that, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. The people that really believe the, the, the philosophy, yeah. you know. And so was I inspired by them? I have to say that um, in, in doing the documentaries that I've done over the years, I, it, they've changed my life, you know. Uh, life isn't all about making movies, it's about living. And I've learned so much from making documentaries, and I've learned so much from punks. The, the thing that, was un, that you, you couldn't deny was the sincerity and the passion right. of these people. And it, it made everything 
around you just seemed so jaded mm-hmm. and made adults seem jaded. And anyone who's bah humbug, like, well, here's the way. Well, really, here's some people who are showing you there could be some other way. Right. And that was huge for me because, you know, I came from the military prep school. I was raised with sit down and shut up and all of that. And so punk rock really kind of opened me up. Yeah. Um, radically changing topics now into okay. your, your other life as a very successful uh, commercial director of big <laughs> ass blockbusters. I, I fell into it. You um, know, what can I well, do? Well, let's talk about Wayne's World Some, for a second. One of my ex-boyfriends called me a waitress that got lucky. And that's why he's my ex-boyfriend. But anyway, go on. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I would never call it luck. Um, <laughs> You know, talent is what you have. But yeah. it is interesting to come from, you know, you are so rooted in the independent film world. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's where I know you from because I've known you for many years. And then to see your name on Wayne's World. I know. I never, no, no, I never said, Sella, what the fuck? I just kind of went, well, cool. Let's just I see only got that job good. on Wayne's World because I had done Decline Part 2 right. about the, the metal years. Yeah. And nobody else in Hollywood really knew anything about heavy metal at the time. I just got that job because they didn't have anybody else, right. you know. And it was my first studio job. It was my seventh movie. Right. You know, I was borrowing money from my sister right before I got the job. And, um, and then I became a millionaire overnight. Right. And it was like a total head spin, you know, because I... I mean, in my head, still, I'm a poor person. Yeah. But, uh, you know, now I have I have some money and, and a more comfortable life, but I can't do the movies that I want to do. You know, I could only do comedies. After I did Wayne's World, I could only do comedies. They wouldn't give me anything else. And so after a while, I just said, okay, I'll do the Beverly Hillbillies, I'll do the Little Rascals, you know, and then they just kept throwing this money at me. And then, thank God... Uh, I had one that bombed uh, th- that I did with Miramax called Senseless with Marlon Wayans and David Spade. But thank God, because at that point I was like going, what am I doing? You know, this money isn't making me happy. What am I doing? And I went up to Burning Man Festival mm-hmm. and some chicks came by when I was pitching a tent and they slipped some uh, ecstasy in my beer. And oh my God, I got so wasted And I just had this, like, I think I died overnight and woke up in the morning and went, I'm not doing that shit anymore. I'm not doing those studio movies anymore. And um, that's when I decided to go do Decline 3. Wow. It changed my life. I just had to get away from it, you know. It's not satisfying to do those big studio movies. It wasn't for me. Right. Well... Then, then let's talk about this Janice film, because obviously you're really into it and everyone (laughs) likes Janice Joplin. Um, why did you choose her to do a movie about I, her? I think Janice chose me, actually, mm. <laughs> because she was an inspiration to me, and I yeah. think that's why I haven't given up over the years. Um, and to me, she's a hero. She's, you know, yes, she OD'd, and yes, she was an alcoholic, but more than that, she was brave and tre- and and broke the rules and made her way in the music business when women weren't allowed to do what she was doing. And she was so ballsy and so just cool and funny and smart. So for me, she's a role model, and that's why I want to make the movie. I think she's an inspiration. You know, I want to make, I'm going to make a movie about a hero, not a person that, you know, screwed up and killed himself. Right. Well, how's it going? It's a long struggle, but, (laughs) you know, we we had Pink for a while. Actually, she can two sing years. Her ass off. Oh, she's so we, great. We did the most awesome um, screen test with Pink, and she really nailed the music. That's for sure. And also, she's just got so much. She's got charisma. Totally. I mean, even you just yeah. you see her interview. You're like, a casting person would look at that and go like, get that, yeah. put her in something. She's right. got that thing. Obviously. So, welcome to Hollywood. That didn't work out. Mm. <laughs> right. Then you know they had me going out on interviews. I went and interviewed. Uh, well, I went and met Britney Spears, and uh, she's a sweet girl. <laughs> but um, we are still looking for our Janis Joplin. Right now, we're looking toward Kate Hudson. I don't know who's going to be Janis Joplin because Janis is up there pulling the strings, and when she figures it out, she'll let me know, hopefully. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, oh, I, I, I hope you get it done. It's a good story. It's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. Well... 
I've been a fan of yours uh, ever since Decline, and I'm, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, and I, I think it's really important what you do. So, uh, Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to the Janice film, and uh, Thank you. thanks for being on our show. Oh, you rock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Cool. Henry is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up a bit later in the show, an exclusive musical performance from John Doe. But first, a few words from the people in IFC's Soapbox. My name is Steven Eichler, and I am the executive director of the Minuteman Project. My name is Martin Albernaz. I'm the publisher of the LA Alternative newspaper here in Los Angeles, and my parents were immigrants. My name is Rebayeb Karim, and I work with uh, South Asian immigrants who are survivors of domestic violence. My name is Tim Bueller. I'm president and founder of the High School Conservative Clubs of America. My name is Byron, and I'm an immigrant from Guatemala. My name is Brooke Souls. I'm a public high school teacher here in Los Angeles, and most of my students are immigrants. My name is Guillermo, and I represent Our Lady Queen of Angel Church in downtown LA. My name is Lupe Moreno. I am a member of the Minuteman Project, Latino Americans for Immigration Reform, and California Coalition for Immigration Reform. When people from other nations in the United States want to come here, the right way is getting a green card, which is a minimum background check. They have an employer waiting, they show up on the job, they have a place to live, they demonstrate the fact that they can support themselves, and then uh, if they wish to become a citizen, they have to go through the citizenship process. As a child of immigrants, uh, I know that immigrants are hardworking, and uh, this country wouldn't be the same without the, uh, the work of immigrants. Well, I'm an immigrant myself, so I feel like everyone deserves an opportunity to succeed um, in, the, in this country, especially if they, if they left their homeland to be here, uh, be part of the society. What we have now is more than 10,000 illegal aliens who are coming across America's southern borders a day, and they're demanding not more rights, but your rights. So in my class, we ha I have a lot of different um, races and cultural backgrounds. So I do see a lot of harmony between races, between cultures, between languages, between people. And I think that it is possible that, yes, we can all work together in this world. It will always take a lot of work, but it's definitely possible because I see it on a daily basis. They keep saying we're a nation of immigrants. OK, I give that. We, we are a nation of immigrants. But dang it, we're also a nation of American citizens. Are they terrorists? We don't know. What do they bring with them? We don't know. Mexico needs its own dream, its own belief, its own future. We're here working, uh, paying taxes, and we're part of the social fabric of the U.S. The bottom line is, if they are invading the United States of America, if they're coming here illegally and you are helping them, you're a traitor. I don't think the United States is really welcome to, welcoming to immigrants. I think oftentimes what immigrants come to might be this notion of the American dream, but what they really face when they come here is discrimination, is lack of access to information or benefits um, and services, and really even the basic rights that you know, every person should be given. You know, I'll be the first to admit that I wrongly predicted the downfall of the celebrity television fad because it seems to be blossoming more than ever. It's as if there's a never-ending well of B-list celebrities who, when put in the proper situation, will completely degrade themselves to the delight of thousands of middle Americans. Well, now it's my turn. I have a celeb reality show in the works too, and all I can say is, look out Hulk Hogan, Tori Spelling, and Tawny Katane. Henry's got some self-exploitation to do, and he's not going to let any normal definitions of decency or standards get in the way. Because I refuse to do anything boring like Dancing with the Stars. That show's just a cop-out for has-beens who think pretty dancing can erase years of bad career choices. Just picture this. Henry Rollins, 10 cannibal priests, a haunted igloo, candy-flavored boots, two miles of cow dung, and a chance at a million frequent flyer miles. Not good during blackout dates. Not controversial enough? Okay. How about black white meets animal cops? I'll trade places with an outlaw squirrel, and I'll discover the double indignities of foraging for dinner and being blamed any time a garbage can falls over. Too controversial? Okay. How about following me for 10 days as I search for the perfect hair gel? Not relatable enough? 
All right, fine. How about me and you for dinner and a movie? I'll pick you up at seven. Not informative enough? All right. How about Hidden Restrooms of Pakistan with Henry Rollins or Inside the Pole Dancer's Studio? But whatever form my show takes, just keep one thing in mind. When you see me yelling at my new roommate, Bruce, for stealing my date and my pomegranate juice, just remember that I'm only doing it for the money. And now, here's Heidi May with this week's musical performance from John Doe. Thanks, Henry. As a co-founding member of the punk band X, he was one of the most influential figures in rock. A decade later, he launched a solo career and demonstrated his versatility by celebrating his country music influences and refusing to be labeled. Today, he continues to evolve as both actor and musician. Here to perform the song Heartless off his most recent album, Forever Hasn't Happened Yet, we welcome the brilliant John Doe, Uncut. Someone broke your heart when they dropped it on the ground Someone broke your heart when they dropped it on the ground You ask if you could borrow mine Just to get a And I said no, you stole it anyway When I said no, you stole it without a second thought Now you've gone and broke that too With things you should be careful with Things that are fragile You're careless with things that are fragile You could be more careful Now I'm so heartless Thanks again to my guests, John Doe and Penelope Spheris. Now, before we go, as Massachusetts governor and presidential hopeful Mitt Romney continues to push for legislation to limit the adoption rights of gay couples, this week's end credits go to Carl Heinrich Ulrichs and Brenda Howard. Carl Heinrich Ulrichs is considered to be one of the first public advocates of gay rights. Although his reforms gained little popular support at the time, his open homosexuality and academic writings are said to have sparked the modern-day gay rights movement. On the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Gay Uprising against New York police discrimination, Brenda Howard organized the Christopher Street Liberation Day March on June 28, 1970. Thirty years later, Howard is now considered the mother of the nationwide gay pride parade still held on the date of her original march, helping to bring the issue of gay rights to mainstream America. So as much as people might think that gay rights achieved its pinnacle with the first episode of Will and Grace, Republicans like Romney gunning for the White House know that a little gay bashing can still make you the big man on the Electoral College campus. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.